Hey guys, we're back. Um, we're still dealing with our Catalase Enzyme Lab data. Um, in a previous video, I went through just how to calculate your mean and standard deviation. And in this video, we're going to look at how to use that data to make a graph. Um, there's a couple different types of graphs that you need to make for this. Um, the one I'm going to focus on in this video is looking at um, time versus percent O2 produced when hydrogen peroxide is broken down or decomposed in the presence of catalase. Um, so here I need to tell the program what I want it to do. So I am going to select the data. So here I have time. Now I'm going to come over and I'm going to hit control and then select my mean or average data. I always want to graph my means. You never really want to graph your raw data. It may look fancy, but it's not giving you usable information. Um, so here, again, I'm going to kind of scroll down and carefully hit control and then select all of this data that I want it to calculate for me. Um, So here I'm going to select all of those data points and then I'm going to go to insert chart. And let's see what happens. So here now I have this very fancy looking column chart, which is not what I want. Um, I want a line graph for this. I really want to see the rate of the reaction. And so I need to make some adjustments. I'm going to tell it that that is not at all what I wanted. I want a line chart and I want my percent concentration over here and my time over here. Now sometimes you'll get it like this um, and it's really just confused. It didn't realize that that first thing I selected is what I wanted it to use over here and so if you click that or if it's doing this you can always come back here and add the x-axis. Um, it's really important before you graph anything using a computer program to have an idea of what the graph should look like and what it is you're trying to look at. Um, otherwise you're just going to fall victim to whatever pops up first. So really think about what you're graphing and why and what kind of data you want to pull from that. So if I look at this, I've got my time here, I've got my concentration of um, oxygen here, and if I look, these are all of my different, um, different temperatures. And so I can compare, and looking at just, just looking at the graph, I can see that 37 and 42 seem to have the, the steepest slope which means that the reaction was occurring the fastest. They all seem pretty close together here, um, but just based on what I'm seeing with your class data, these two seem to have the highest rate of reaction because I really want to know how fast, so how much O2 per second. Um, and some, There's some different things you can do with this. You're going to want to go to Customize. Um, you need to be able to make sure you look at your titles. So here I definitely want to get rid of this um, and give it an appropriately descriptive title. Um, so percent oxygen gas produced by catalase at different temperatures would be a reasonable title. Not the only title that would be reasonable here, but one title that would be reasonable. Um, if I want to then label my different axes, so my vertical axes is not labeled there. 
um, you get to put your percent oxygen gas. Um, here I don't have a unit because I'm measuring in percent, but if you had a unit, you would want to make sure to include it there. Time has already been labeled for me. Another thing you could do if you want to deal with that is just click on it and it'll pull up, but otherwise you have these kind of drop down menus. Um, here I already have each of these labels, and you'll notice that these were the labels that I had at the heading. Um, that's going to be important so you can identify what data is what. Now, one thing I can do is insert trend lines for all of my different series. Um, you can't see them very well. Let's see, maybe if I make this bigger, you can see it. You can see the trend lines. This is pretty linear data. Um, and so I can also ask, ask it to use the equations. So if I wanted to know the slope of each of these lines, I could use these values to determine that. And that's one way of figuring out the rate of the reaction. Um, so in the next video, I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about how to calculate rate. Um, but just for now, this is how you can put together your graph. Remember, if you're struggling or something goes wrong, you always have the back button. You can always try again. Um, and let me know if you have questions in class. Hope that was helpful.